What's going on everyone? I'm James Grage and we're back here in the bodybuilding.com gym. I'm here with Andy Swanson, who is a bodybuilding.com team member, also a competitor, physique yep. competitions or classic physique. Yep, traditionally physique competitions. I've done one bodybuilding show for fun. Okay, so, yeah. so we can say bodybuilder. Sure. We're gonna be doing a total body workout, so hitting every major muscle group, and we're gonna be doing this only using resistance bands, so no weights, no machines, and this is something that you can do anywhere. You can take this you know, outside if you want to, you can do it while traveling, you can do it at home, but this is a great full body workout. It's something that uh, if you're limited on time, you don't have time for a five day a week traditional bodybuilding split and you only have maybe two or three days a week this is a great way to get in there hit every single body part so ready to jump into this yeah let's get it we're gonna do an overhead squat and one of the things i like about this exercise is it is total body we're engaging more than just the quads hamstrings and glutes yep. that we would get in a squat because we're pressing it up overhead we're getting good isometric contraction and our delts our triceps, we're having to really engage our core. Mm -hmm. And I think that you're gonna find that your heart rate is gonna bump up pretty quick on this. Yeah. Let's uh, give this heavy band a try. So these are Undersun Fitness resistance bands. They come in a set uh, of five. They come in a nylon drawstring bag like that. So you can take them anywhere, throw them in your backpack. Uh, or if you're traveling, throw them right in your carry-on. Comes in a extra light, light, medium. This one, the heavy, and an extra heavy. So we're gonna use this one right here. Okay. The first time that you're doing this, you wanna go with a lighter resistance. Really nail down the technique. Okay. Right, because you're always gonna have the next workout and the next workout after that. You're always gonna have plenty of time to be able to advance and move up into resistance, you know, heavier resistance. Yep. So we're gonna anchor this right under our feet. Just like a traditional squat, we're gonna go with about a little bit wider than shoulder width apart. And then to get into our starting position, you can just drop right down, get up here at shoulder height, and we're gonna press it straight over our head. And this is our starting position, and this is where we're gonna stay. We're gonna drop our butt down all the way, get 90 degrees at the knee, and then press back up. The reason I like an overhead squat, it promotes really good body alignment. As you come down, if you start to see your hands, you know you're doing it the wrong way. Keep them right overhead, and that's gonna force you to drop your butt down. How'd that feel? Full body right there. You feel your Definition. heart rate start to jump yep. up? Heart rate's already up. Another cool thing about bands is because they have variable resistance, which means the more you stretch them, the harder they get. Bands actually more closely match the natural strength curve of our muscles. Good resistance at the bottom, where you're weaker, and at the top, where you're stronger, you've got even more resistance. Yeah. The key is being that less resistance at the very bottom so I could get into that full squat position. Yep. All right, so two sets of those. Moving right into a back exercise. And what we're gonna do is a bent over row. We're gonna anchor it the exact same way, right under our feet. Your stance doesn't matter as much for the exercise, but it does matter for the resistance level. By widening our stance, we can adjust the resistance level. The other way we adjust the resistance level is where we grab the band. The closer to our anchor point, which in this case is our feet, the harder it's going to be, the higher up, the easier it's gonna be. So you can actually adjust your resistance on the fly. Back nice and straight, chest out, chin up. A lot of people have a tendency to roll their back, round out their back. We don't wanna do that. We almost want a slight arch in our back. And so by sticking our chin up and our chest out, we're gonna get that good arch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out wide with the elbows. And I want you to think about squeezing your shoulder blades together, get that little extra squeeze. Think about if I were to take a tennis ball and put it between your shoulder blades, you would wanna try to squeeze that tennis ball. There you go. Now there is one other way to do this. This one's gonna require using a lighter resistance. And what you can do, if you wanna create even more resistance, you can also double up the band this way. So around the wrist, and that way, the weight is on our wrist and not in our hands. So this would be another way to do it right here. Okay. So it seems like you wouldn't burn out maybe in the forearms. Right. So if there's like a certain muscle group you're trying to hit. Exactly. If you're kind of like anchored in there, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna actually activate the muscle you want. Right. All right, so we've knocked out legs. Now we did back. 
we're gonna move into some biceps. So we're gonna do a standing biceps curl. Same exact anchoring point right under our feet. Same concept, we can go wider or narrower to shorten or lengthen the band, create more or less resistance. Same thing with our hand position. We can grab lower or higher. You know, stand straight up. Keep those elbows in a fixed position right at your side. We're gonna curl up and think about keeping those pinkies nice and high. In other words, don't think thumb high. Yeah. <clears throat> so pinky high, get that good squeeze at the top and back down. 20 reps of those. So the same issue that we have in a squat, we have with a curl. We're weaker down here, really strong here, but then at the peak of our movement, right here where we should have the most resistance, we actually have the least. Now with the bands, as you go up, they start to stretch and you get more resistance as you get to the top. You have constant tension all the way through the range of motion here. There is no dead area. And at the bottom, where we're a little bit weaker, it's a little bit easier. You can't cheat with bands. With free weights, the reason that people swing and use all this momentum is to get past that sticking point of right here. All right, knocked out biceps. Now we're gonna move on to triceps. So I'll come over here. Traditional anchoring a band, you just wrap around and then through itself. And there it is, it's anchored. A couple different ways you could grab in the loop. I prefer not to. I prefer to grab it with my thumb facing the anchoring point. Opposite foot forward to the arm that I'm working. I usually put my hand right on my knee there to rest. You're gonna keep your elbow in one fixed position. This is a mistake that I see a lot of people make when they're doing dumbbell kickbacks is that elbow starts moving back and forth. You wanna think of that as your pivot point and it's gotta stay in one spot. Squeeze straight back and all the way forward. Now the nice thing about this, using resistance bands is you have tension all the way through that range of motion. See how he's getting that really good squeeze? That's what you want. It's rare that I lock out on any kind of exercise, but on triceps, that's one that I do. So as soon as Andy finishes, I'm gonna show you a different variation that we can do to get the same kind of movement here, but doing it unanchored. So one thing that you can do, come down here, and you can anchor the band right under your hand. Okay. And you can do the exact same thing as we're doing here, standing. Yep. Cool. All right, we're gonna move into a banded push-up. Starting position, I just like to stick my hands right through the band, you can see like that up over my head, keeping them nice and flat, and right across my back. You don't want to go too high because they'll slip off onto your neck, and you don't want to go too low on your back because once you get in position, it'll do the same thing. It doesn't really feel good on the back of your head. <laughs> so right across your back, drop down. Now the starting position, what you want to do is if you're like this with little T-Rex arms, you're not going to be able to get into position. You're going to fall on your forehead. Not gonna look very cool in the gym. So go ahead and stretch it out. Then you get into position. So all the way down. Now as you press back up, what I want you to focus on is pretending to squeeze those hands together. Now another thing is he's doing these you see where the band is sitting in his hand, you wanna make sure that it doesn't sit too high towards his fingers because then it puts a lot of stress or it's uh, you know creating a lot of leverage there in the wrist and then you'll feel that pressure there. So you always wanna to try to anchor it more towards the base of your palm. As he's doing these and he's focusing on getting full extension and getting that squeeze and controlling his eccentric or his negatives on the way down, He's expending a lot of energy. He's really working that muscle and he is gonna fatigue quicker. So this is not a numbers game. One of the challenges I think that people have when they do push-ups is we're conditioned like, how many push-ups can you do? Oh yeah, it's right? a speed That's a, thing. It's a speed, speed thing. quantity. Speed and reps. Yep. Zandy could do a whole lot more, even with that band, if he was just focused on speed and just knocking out reps. Yep. It's not about that. This is about slow, controlled, quality reps. I think people aren't used to this amount of time under tension and stress to their chest. Yep. So I would say maybe for a beginner, if you feel that it's too much, just pop the band off yep. and go into your normal 
push up. Yep. So that is chest. Now we're gonna move on to shoulders. Okay. This is a uh, this is a pretty basic one, but it's still a good one. This is a standing shoulder press, and it actually looks a lot like our overhead squat okay. as far as setup. So it's gonna be the same thing. I'm just gonna use this medium band to demonstrate. Okay. I'll let you pick away. I think you should, me personally, I think you should try the heavy, but okay. that's just me. You got me. So we're gonna come into position. This is our starting point right here. About shoulder width stance. And we're gonna press straight up overhead. Now, some people have a tendency to wanna to come in here to the middle. I like to focus on pressing directly overhead. Looks good. You also see that he is keeping them wide, meaning if I were to turn sideways to the camera, he's not letting his elbows creep forward. A lot of people have a tendency to do this. And when you do that, you're automatically gonna start using more triceps. So go ahead and make sure as you're doing these presses, they're not coming here, but they're out here. Feel good? That's a good delt pump right there. There it is. We're gonna move into our two finishing exercises here. So one is going to be abs. Okay. The other is going to be calves. And a lot of people are like, well, how do you train calves with yeah, bands? Yeah, that's the first thing that went through my head. So you're gonna find out. Okay. So I've got a 25 pound plate. It's nice to go ahead and elevate our toes so we can get just that slight, slight stretch. So under the toe, if you put this under the arch of your foot, there's no benefit. If you put this under your heel, there's no benefit. It has to go under your toe. And then the toe on the plate, in our starting position is just right here, right at the shoulder. If you wanted to, and you didn't really want to have the weight in your hand, you could if you wanted to. Get your whole shoulder in it, yeah. Get your whole shoulder right into it. Holding on to something just for balance. Yeah. And just getting that full extension at the top. Okay. So it's a single leg calf raise. Okay. Just like that. So as we go up on our toes, we're still stretching that band, creating more resistance, not to mention the full weight of our body. Okay, give it a go. Now people have this idea that just because calves are really strong that we have to train with a ton of weight. I'm not a big believer in that. I believe in good contractions and when people are using too much weight, I end up seeing kind of almost like a half rep. They never get all the way up. So it doesn't take a lot of resistance or a lot of weight if you use good technique. Yeah. You feel a contraction? That felt really good. That felt like really heavy plates on my back. Yeah. Calf raise. And it's not it a lot of resistance the there. Yeah. I'm gonna move right into abs. Perfect. We're gonna use a light resistance here. You do not want to use a lot of resistance because you won't be able to get good full range of motion here. So we're gonna use the same anchor point except we're gonna come nice and low with it. Lay that down on the ground so I can reach back and grab it. I'm gonna lay down, standard crunch position. Now, a couple ways to adjust the band. One, I could, you know, <laughs> wiggle my way down and scoot away from the anchor point, but the easier way is just reaching closer toward the anchor point, create tension here at the beginning of the range of motion, and then curl up. Make sure you get that good squeeze right there at the top. Yep. Now, even that light band is a lot of resistance. Honestly, why don't you go ahead and anchor that extra light band right there? Okay. Same position. I mean, even doing regular crunches are effective, right? You feel those in your abs. So now we're doing the same thing, just adding a little bit of resistance. Okay. You ready? Yep. So shoulders locked, elbows locked. So you're not moving your arms as you're doing this. Me, I actually like to go ahead and hold it right to the top of my head. So it's in my fingers, but I put the base of my palm right on the sides of my head. Right now, Andy has it right in front of his eyes so he can actually literally see it and he can make sure that he's not moving. So just find a position where you don't have to think about your hands anymore. Oh yeah. That's good. It's good, right? Yep. So that's it, man. We knocked it out. Those were eight different movements, so that was a total body workout. We hit every major muscle group here. If you're on the ball, you can knock this out easy in a half hour. Anyone who's skeptical as to a full body workout and hitting like individual muscles, you, you can do it. I do appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. We'll see you guys next time.